Today, I would like to introduce you guys to the Eclipse Protocol gear set. This is a gear set that I've been using as my main skill build over the past couple months, and I use it in heroic and legendary activities. I think it's one of the best crowd control gear sets in the game, and it's just a ton of fun to use, and I think it's definitely worth your time. So today we're going to take a look at this gear set, see what it does by itself. Then I want to talk about what high-end items, so high-end armor pieces and high-end weapons that you could pair with this whenever you're creating a build. And then also we'll talk about what specializations you should be using whenever you're making a build with this gear set. In full disclosure, my buddy Grix is the one that turned me onto this loadout and to this gear set a couple months ago, so I'm giving him the full credit for that. I have his YouTube channel in the video description down below for reference. If you're interested in checking him out, he does a lot of Division 2 content. He's a big Dark Zone player as well, so I'm sure he'd appreciate it if you uh, checked out his channel. So first, let's take a look and see what the set bonuses are. For two pieces, you get 15% boost to SAS effects. For three, you get 15% skill haste, as well as you get 30% hazard protection. And then for the four piece bonus, which like all gear sets is what's really gonna make this build, is you get indirect transmission. Your stats effects now spread on kill to all enemies within 10 meters and refresh 50% of the duration. The chest piece and backpack both also have talents that are going to boost your four piece bonus. Your chest piece will increase the indirect transmission range from 10 meters to 15 meters. And it will also increase the status effect refresh percentage from 50% to 75%. So basically your status effects will affect people at a wider range and they'll also last longer whenever they are transferred to new enemies. And then the backpack's talent will allow you to do increased damage by 30% to enemies that have status effects. In the clip on screen right now, I'm using the fire sticky bomb, which causes burn status effect. So I shoot the enemy on the right, he dies, and then the entire group on the left side now gets that status effect. And then once they start dying off, then the status effect keeps spreading to new enemies, then they die, and then it spreads again. The skills that I like using with this gear set are the Stinger Hive because it has a really wide radius and it's very easy to inflict bleed on a large group of enemies at the same time. I also like using the Sticky Bomb that does burn damage and it's a little easy to miss your target but once you get some practice with it then it'll be very useful and it also has a relatively short cooldown time as well. Now let's talk about what high end and exotic armor pieces you want to pair with this gear set whenever you're making a build. I highly recommend using a wyvern backpack because you get the additional skill damage. And for the backpack talent, I recommend using creeping death. Creeping death will transfer a status effect to all enemies within eight meters whenever you apply a status effect to an enemy. And it doesn't require you to get a kill. The four piece bonus that you have from the Eclipse protocol requires you to get a kill on a status affected enemy in order for your status effects to spread. So using Creeping Death as your backpack talent will allow you to just constantly be spreading a status effect on multiple groups of enemies. For exotic armor pieces, I think you have two really solid options for this build. The first would be using the Waveform Holster. Basically, it gives you just a constant buff that is swapping between one of your two skills. So you always have a boost in damage to one of your skills. It is alternating, so you do need to keep an eye on which one is boosted, but it is passive and it doesn't require you to get a kill. It doesn't require you to be in cover or do anything specific. You're just always having this alternating boost to one of your skills damage, which is just incredibly useful. Another really great option, and this is the option that I prefer, is to use the BTSU gloves. And what these gloves do is they are focused on your hive. So if you're using the Stinger Hive, which is what I use in this build and with this gear set, or if you're running a healer build and using the hive for healing, then these are also a really great option. But you wouldn't use this gear set. Overall, you get just a huge buff to your hive skill haste, and it's dependent on how many skill tiers you have. So with this build, you're gonna be running six skill tiers, so you're gonna have a lot of skill haste um, into this build. You also have the option of canceling your hive that's currently deployed. Once every two minutes, you can buff your teammates and give them overcharge to their skills, and that's very useful as well. That's something you could be using in PvP, you could be using that in PvE, 
but these are a S tier item to use if you're running a hive in any build. Now let's go over what weapons you want to use with this gear set. And the first choice, which is pretty obvious, would be the Capacitor Exotic Assault Rifle. It is going to provide you with additional weapon damage based off your skill tiers. And since you have six skill tiers in this build, you're going to have a decent amount of extra weapon damage. And then also, whenever you're shooting enemies, that's going to be building up stacks that buff your skill damage. And then that's obviously useful as well. This should basically always be your primary weapon whenever you're running a skill build. The only other time I wouldn't be running this would be if I need to have the Scorpio in my loadout. Like in a legendary, sometimes I'm using the Scorpio just to help with keeping uh, enemies from just rushing me and just mowing me over. If you don't have the capacitor yet, then I think the next best option is the test subject assault rifle. And the reason is because it has perfectly in sync as the weapon talent. Hitting an enemy grants 20% skill damage for 5 seconds. Using a skill or damaging an enemy with a skill grants 20% weapon damage for 5 seconds. And then those damage increases are doubled while both buffs are active at the same time. So if you don't have the capacitor, this is also a great option to use as well. Or if you want to use a Scorpio in a really difficult uh, mission like Legendaries, then I would be using this as my primary. Another great option would be the Surge Named Rifle because it has perfect spike as the weapon talent. Headshots grant 25% skill damage for 15 seconds. So keep in mind, you don't need a headshot kill. It's just a headshot on an enemy, which will be relatively easy to do with a rifle. And then 25% skill damage is a very large buff. And then 15 seconds to have that buff is a very generous amount of time as well. And then the last option I want to go over is that you can use just any high-end assault rifle that you want to, whatever one you prefer, but use the Perpetuation Weapon Talent. And what this talent does is headshots grant 50% stats effect damage and duration to the next stats effect that you apply. So obviously that would pair with this gear set because this gear set is focused on creating stats effects and spreading them. The only downside with this would be the cooldown is 20 seconds and that's kind of long. It'd be really nice if that was five seconds. Whenever you're farming the Eclipse Protocol gear set, the items are just going to drop with a skill tier as the core attribute and I would just leave them that way. The one option that you do have is to change one of them to either weapon damage or armor because if you're using the technician specialization, then you get a free skill tier. So essentially in your actual build, you only need to have five skill tiers because you're getting the one extra from your specialization. So then that gives you an opportunity for an extra 170,000 armor for some more survivability. Or if you want to add in the 15% weapon damage as a core attribute on one of your pieces, then you could do that and deal some additional damage which is always useful. The next option would be the firewall specialization and the reason is because with this specialization you get a buff of 20% burn duration and if you're using a skill that causes burn damage like I am I'm using the sticky bomb that causes burn damage and I'm constantly creating a burn stats effect and spreading that between enemies so this would buff that as well. The only downside would be I need to have a skill tear in all my armor pieces. So I lose out on a little weapon damage or a little armor damage. Both of these specializations are very worth it and use whatever one you want, honestly. And that concludes my overview of this gear set and my build. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if I did miss anything or if you are a new player and there's something that you're struggling with, let me know and I'll be glad to help. And finally, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.